to get wild as we head over to the interview set with Lou and our friend Ron Diarmond from the Wildlife Academy at Merle Hay Mall. The Academy of Wildlife Education is a great place to go, especially if you have raindrops in your future here. You notice that things would be wet outside. How about going inside Merle Hay Mall? That's where his place is at. You can learn something and have a great time at the same time. And before we start here, Ron, uh, uh, Jackie and I both separately experienced something this morning, and we need to find an answer. Okay. Okay. Driving in uh, east of Des Moines, just east of Altoona, across the roadway ran a creature. I went, really? <laughs> Got in here, Jackie tells me, the same type of creature ran across her path on the way in. Both of us swear they were coyotes. Okay. Could that be possible here? East, of, El east yeah. of Altoona and right here in downtown Des Moines. Absolutely. Yeah, there's coyotes, they live everywhere now. Okay, now do I need to worry about my little dog running well, around or? Well, again, there's uh, uh, in Iowa and Des Moines, there's leash law, so yeah, animals aren't supposed to be running at large. I didn't know coyotes had to be on leashes. Well, oh. and again, as far okay. as, yeah, everybody's okay. domestic dogs and cats, uh, yeah, but once it's outdoors. But I have a yard fenced and yeah, Jackie I mean, run around too. Again, it's one of those situations that uh, coyote, coyotes are wild dogs and they're very territorial. And yeah, if they have an opportunity to take down a domestic dog, it's one less dog in their life that they have to compete against. And they don't know if it's domestic or wild, they just look at it as competition. And so what they may do is they may howl, and they've done this in the past, where they'll try to you know, call out an aggressive dog, and then they're in their little group, and then they take down the dog. So if I but see one, would I st is there more than one if possibly, I just saw one? Uh, this time of year, uh, they're denned up, uh, having pups, so okay. uh, you know, chances are there's a family situation. Uh, it wouldn't be too f outside of the realm of possibility that that animal was hunting, and uh, because it would have been early in the morning, I'm yeah, assuming. Yeah, about four. Sure, yeah, they're out foraging for food and stuff like okay. that, and with all the weather uh, patterns and changes here lately uh, a lot of things are on the move and so right, and well, then again even with the, the storms and stuff that could have been a reason that it was moving too. okay let's just keep that in mind but so that's, yeah but that it leads right into, right. and that was another question that people ask a lot what's the difference between a coyote and who you brought in here today Gray wolf right well it's a pretty good uh, topic right now uh, it was just confirmed the other day that uh, they shot a wolf up in northeast Iowa uh, the reason that the wolf was shot is the person that uh, was hunting was shooting coyotes uh, he didn't recognize the difference between a wolf and a coyote uh, and shot it, but he, he did the right thing. He knew that he probably made a mistake and took it to the DNR and turned it in, and they verified it as a female. Uh, that's very important to us as far as wildlife uh, conservation goes because when you have females in an area, that means you could also have a breeding population of that species. Uh, and it's 2001 was the last time we had wolf prints confirmed in the state of Iowa. Really? So it's been a while, and they say it's been about 89 years since they've actually seen a wolf in Iowa. So this is really big news that uh, we've known for quite a while that the wolves were in the state. Uh, they'd been getting killed in Missouri. People again shooting them thinking they're coyotes. And now we come to a point in wildlife conservation that uh, all three of the apex predators have now been confirmed in the state of Iowa over the past four months. We've seen black bear, cougar, now the gray wolf. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to have to manage these species. They're here and they're going to be here for the long haul. And it's very easy to understand why people would confuse the gray wolf uh, with a coyote. We've got some video that they're going to run here in okay. a little bit that's going to show what a gray wolf okay, I can uh, looks like. Okay, I confusing the gray wolf with a German shepherd. Well, again, yeah. if you look at the video here, uh, I mean, when you see that animal out in the woods, and this is what you're going to find, you don't really know what you're looking for unless you've worked with wolves and coyotes on a regular basis. Uh, to us that work with them every day, it's pretty obvious, but if you've never seen a gray wolf, that just looks like a big coyote. It does look like a skinny coy like a a coyote. A coyote or a German Shepherd yeah. or something like that. And again, it's not until you get, you know, a really good head view that you see how big and blocky that skull is mm -hmm. that you realize <laughs> that, uh, you know, you're looking at a coyote. And you're getting ready to do a jump here. Drake relays were about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So uh, you might be a little late. I, I so. think she just uh, laid claim to the carpet. Okay. So that's what they do. And again, we look for these signs in the woods too. That's, that's pretty cool. A, yeah, I mean, they're just doing a scraping is what she's doing. And there's, you know, I'm sure you've had other dogs and stuff in here on this carpet. So she just decided that, hey, she's Making sure it's one. hers now. And this is her carpet. So what we're going to do in Iowa, Iowa, in Iowa, wolves are in the Iowa code. So you just can't go out and knowingly kill wolves. Now it's going to be up to the taxidermy people that if somebody brings in 
ran what they're claiming is a coyote, and they obviously know that it's not, they're going to have to call the DNR. Okay. Because if you uh, willingly kill a gray wolf, it's illegal in Iowa. Uh, they're still. Do you know what the penalty is or not? Uh, no, not off the top of my head. But uh, uh, again, south of Interstate 80, they're mean, still considered. Mean this dog yeah. licking my hand. Yeah. Absolutely, right. south of Interstate 80, wolves are still considered an endangered species. North of Interstate 80, they are managed by the state of Iowa. They've okay. taken, been taken off the endangered species list as far as what we call the uh, Western Great Lakes distinct population segment. Uh, these wolves have been moving through uh, the state for quite a while, and we'll just have to come up with a wolf management plan as far as okay. how many we think uh, can be sustained in the state. Uh, would we ever harvest them like they do up in Wisconsin and uh, Minnesota? We don't have a lot of public lands for these animals to, to live on. Mm -hmm. uh, we track wolves uh, in Wisconsin uh, for their state, and the average uh, wolf territory is only 35 square miles. Okay. Uh, to give you an idea, Red Rock, that whole uh, wildlife uh, refuge out there is 35 square miles, okay. so that'd be one pack. Uh, well, there, not, not just one wolf, but one, one, pack, one pack of wolves. Okay. would probably be sustained out at the Red Rock area. Same thing with Sailorville and Coralville. Uh, again, those are our biggest chunks of uh, now what happens land. if there's more than one pack in an area will they they'll can, fight they fight yeah, yeah. I mean uh, they'll fight to the death they're very territorial wow. they're a family unit uh, you uh, you know the, the big concern is again their impact on the uh, ag industry uh, the good news is is that uh, they really don't take uh, livestock they prefer the white-tailed deer there's okay. just less uh, threats for them and less exposure uh, by going after whitetail and we've got plenty of whitetail deer right. for the wolves and the cougars here in the state. So it's something that can be managed. I know that there's uh, uh, ranchers up in uh, Minnesota that don't want people killing their wolves because they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. They're eating the livestock. They're, or they're eating the livestock. They're eating the deer, <laughs> leaving the livestock alone. Right. So uh, and again and the same thing in uh, Wisconsin. I know some people that don't want Folks killing their coyotes because the coyotes are eating the or the wildlife and uh, leaving their livestock alone. So, uh, livestock and wildlife can coexist. It does take a bit of an effort, and it's come to the point of where we're going to have to decide if we're going to take the measures to uh, allow these animals mm -hmm. to reestablish themselves. They're historically native; they're supposed to be here, and so they've got a place in the Iowa ecosystem. Uh, you just take a look. I just want the camera to take a look and see how big this animal is. And uh, she's this is again, but it's animal, not so big. Not, 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 not so much. <laughs> but again, big, yeah. this is the size of a of a husky or a uh, a German, German shepherd. shepherd. A right. German shepherd is probably the closest one to it. All uh, domestic breed dogs uh, came from the wolf. Uh, the Native Americans, even the Chihuahua, even the Chihuahua. The Native Americans uh, domesticated the wolf. Uh, they inbred them to get the different breeds, and yeah, the Chihuahua was a lot of inbreeding to get at that small. Wow, I stuff. would but, say. Yeah, anybody yeah. have a Chihuahua? Pick him up, look in his little beady eyes, and say, "You awesome." little gray wolf you because that's exactly <laughs> what you have scientifically look at speaking his little eyes yeah that's okay, right look at that them. little chihuahua and say you awesome little gray wolf but yeah they're uh, canis lupus familiaris and this is canis lupus so again they're just a different subspecies of gray wolf uh, and that's you know I've worked with wolves for many many years uh, because they're a social animal that's what makes them easy for us to interact with and we imprint them so again this isn't what your wild wolves are going to do right uh, so I don't mean, go trying to pick yeah. a wild wolf okay <laughs> please out there and throw your arms around them uh, and they don't like elpo they like white tail they like white tail white tail rabbits squirrels uh, all that uh, fun stuff that's okay. in the wild for them to catch now if people want to see uh, one of the gray wolves up close and and personal tell everybody how they can do so well uh, we're gonna go do some uh, wolf programs across the state uh, we're scheduled to be up at uh, Red Rock and Coralville and Sailorville Lake so if you go to our website uh, you can get a, uh, the dates as far as when those programs are our wolves will be one of the uh, featured programs at the Iowa State Fair this year good and then again at the Academy of Wildlife Education in Merle Hay Mall uh, you can come and see the wolves every day uh, regular like mall hours regular mall hours regular mall hours and uh, yeah ask us about uh, you know how to work with wolves and the, the management that's uh, involved with them again it's not uh, uh, difficult to uh, coexist with the animals. Uh, the Native Americans did it before we were here. Uh, we're just going to have to learn to do it again. Wonderful. And if we want to, I mean, it'd be awesome to have people stop in Iowa uh, on their way to Yellowstone and take pictures of our wolves and cougars and bears. Perfect. And that would be an ideal ecotourism setup. Well done again, Ron. Good Thanks. job. Yeah. Thank